Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show by mailing a donation to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913. That's P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just going to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Indictment. The original air date, September 15th, 1957, and the title is Fur Robberies. Indictment, a formal written charge of crime as the basis for trial of the accused. Indictment. The drama you are about to hear is from New York City and is based on stories of the criminal law with authentic procedures as detailed by Eliezer Lipsky, former assistant district attorney of New York. It is the assistant district attorney who directs criminal investigations, assembles facts and witnesses, builds the case to a just indictment. This way, Fatso, through the door. Okay, hold it up. Turn out your pockets. Belt comes off, shoelaces. Put your wallet in the envelope and seal it. How long do I stay here? Till the day you're sentenced. You pick up your stuff when you go up the river. All right, go ahead, lick the envelope. Yeah, I could use a drink. There's water in your cell. All right, this way. Okay, watch the door. In you go. Okay, fatso. You can draw against the money in the envelope once a day for cigarettes, candy bars, and postage stamps. Have fun. Uh, Legal aid. I could have done better if I tried my own case. What was your rap, huh? I swear I didn't see you up there. I always liked uppers. What was your rap? What was yours? <laughs> Same as usual, make them book. Yeah. Attempt at extortion. I had a good thing going on a trash handling racket. Move in on new stores around the housing projects. But I had to go and pick on an ex-Marine. So oh, I'll get a year. Won't kill me. Oh, no. What's with the oh, no? They got a new gimmick now. Indeterminate sentencing. Indeterminate? What's that? Indeterminate. That's up to three. They can keep me up there for three years for a lousy attempted extortion? Three solid, but uh, with good time, maybe. Oh, no. They don't give me no lousy three years. Uh, Who was the uh, DA with your case? I don't know. McCormick, something like that. Yeah, yeah, McCormick. Why? If I was you, I'd holler for him. Why? I hear he's pretty square. Yeah, like a neg. The day I see a square assistant DA. Now, this one I hear is very square. If you was to holler for him and say you want to help yourself, he'll listen. Rat? Rat for the DA? Come on. What you do is up to you. I'm only saying, if you want to help yourself and try and buy a lower sentence, McCormick will listen. The point is, you gotta come through. You gotta give him something. Are you stolen for him? Would I be here waiting for a ride upstate if I was a pigeon? You can help yourself with McCormick. Think. Think of a job you can give him where there was only you and one other guy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Give him everything, everything. A whole confession. And he sends me up on that, sure. Nah, the beauty part of it is he can't touch you on your testimony. Also, he can't touch you on the other guy's. 
He can't touch him because he can't convict on the testimony of co-conspirators. So that way... All right, all right, just one thing. Yeah? If you're such a good jailhouse lawyer, how come you're going up the river for a lousy bookmaking pinch? Oh, that. Yeah, that. Well, uh, the thing is, making book was the pinch. What they wanted was for murder, too. So uh, when you talk to McCormick, don't mention my name. Get the picture. And we do mean motion picture. This is your chance to attend school within your assigned area. How? By enrolling in a USAFI telecourse. If you are taking a USAFI correspondence course, you may also be able to attend a classroom on film, which will give you additional instruction on the same subject. Although primarily prepared for showing in areas which are serviced by Armed Forces Television, these telecourses can also be shown in any other area which has a standard 16-millimeter projector. The filmed courses each come in a series of from 12 to 20 half-hour films and are conducted by well-qualified high school and college teachers. At the present time, the number of courses is limited. So if you are interested in studying by this method, see your education officer for information and details. Then, enroll with USAFI and let a telecourse be your guide. Smith, what's your problem? Mr. McCormick, I want to help myself. What do you mean by that? Well, I want to try and buy a lower sentence. <laughs> Who's been talking to you in there? They put him in the same cell with Billy the Bull, Mr. McCormick. Oh, well, great advice you must have got from a punk who's going to end up in the chair one of these fine days. What do you mean, a lower sentence? How do you know what sentence you're going to draw? I hear about this indeterminate sentence thing you got going now. It means three years, right? It means up to three years. Am I up for that deal? It's up to the court. Look, figure it out. Your yellow sheet shows two dozen arrests in the past 15 years and only two convictions. You're long overdue for a stretch. Mr. McCormick, I heard you was fair and square. I heard you'd listen to a man. Well, I'm listening, I'm listening. You say you want to help yourself. Go ahead. Mr. McCormick, I want to help you. I want to give you a good case. Oh, I don't know. Putting you away has improved my morale considerably. Huh? Never mind, never mind. Okay, you asked me to listen, I'm listening. You got to promise me something first. Mr. McCormick can't make any deal, Smith. I'm trying to say I want to make a confession, but all I ask is you don't use it against me. Are you going to give me somebody else? Is that it? Mr. McCormick, you can send me up a tree, and what do you got? A lousy little attempt at extortion. Dirtiest shakedown racket in years is what it is. That Marine should have beat you to a pulp. Mr. McCormick, do I have to take this from that detective? I give you something, otherwise you got no lead on it at all. <laughs> Come to the point. What I'm trying to say is, I can hand you a good robbery case. Grand larceny, the whole story, names, places. You can close the book on it. If you let me tell you... Let me tell you something, Smith. I have you where I want you. On your way to three well-deserved years in the can, I don't have to make any deals with you. And don't worry, I'll listen to your story. I won't use it against you, but I'm warning you in advance. A, it has to be good info. B, it has to lead to an indictment and conviction. And C, get this through your bullet head, even then, the best I can do for you is inform the court that you've been cooperative with this office. And that is as far as I can or will go to help you. Have you got that? Mr. McCormick, that's all I ask. A word to the judges and they'll know what to do. That's all I ask. They told me you were fair and square and I trust you. All right, you. all right. What robbery? Where? When? Uh, 1953. Easter Sunday. Consolidated furs. The warehouse over where they built the new terminal, right? Detective Russo? He's right, Mr. McCormick. I was on safe and lofts then. We never broke it. Let me ask you this, big man. What was the haul? That curly black fur, those little like goats, curly, uh, caracul, caracul, yeah. And a whole mess of them stripy little things like chipmunks, barra, barra... Baron Ducci? Baron Ducci, right. Six mutation mink, which, by the way, we couldn't unload. They was kind of rare in those days. How much did it come to? What it come to on our end, 5,000 apiece. But for sure, the whole lot was 100 grand in goods. He's on the beam, Mr. McCormick. Records will bear them out. Mm-hmm. 
a matter of fact, there was a whole series of holiday jobs back then. Uh, I'm giving you just this one. Who was in on it? One, there was Eddie Cannon from Chicago. He cased it, worked out the plan, furnished the truck and the guns. And Danny Doby, he drove. Detective Russo, check out those names. Yes. Huh? Uh, wait a minute. I ain't finished yet. There was an eyewitness. He wouldn't give you nothing, but I'm telling you, he caught a glimpse. The parking attendant where Cannon sold the truck. No, no, you don't catch me. I'm giving you the straight story. It was the watchman, and you know it was the watchman. Checks, Mr. McCormick. I must have thrown the fear of death into the old man. He developed the worst case of sudden amnesia we ever ran into. Yeah. Anything else? That's the story. You can check it, and it's all there. I honestly want to help myself, Mr. McCormick. One year, all right, with time off, I'm in good shape. But after all, I'm an old man, Mr. McCormick. I'm in trouble if I got to go up for three years. And I swear, Mr. McCormick, if I get this break, I'm keeping my nose clean. Uh, wait a minute, Detective Russo. I can save you some work. I can tell you where to find Doby right now. That'll be a help. He's still driving. That was the whole point. He was a legitimate driver. He could handle anything. Pick up trucks, tractor and trailer, anything. Uh, where would I find him? The union. The union would know. Bring him in, Detective Russo. Yes, sir. All right, Smith. The whole thing all over again from the top. Everything you can remember. Am I doing all right, Mr. McCormick? Am I doing the right thing? Am I helping myself? You heard me. Take it from the top. The rest is up to the court. But you're not going to use it against me. That's the understanding. Smith, I'm bound by law not to use this statement against you. Any prosecutor who gets a confession by making a promise not to use it is bound by law. I wouldn't use it even if there weren't a law that said I couldn't. Mr. McCormick, they were right. I guess I did the right thing. Special Bureau, Russo. This is Chicago ID. On that request this morning, Eddie Cannon, you asked for that? Yeah, that's right. Uh, where is he? Well, his body's buried out back at Joliet. He was killed in a prison riot last year. Anything else you want to know? No, that's all. Thanks. Betcha. Mr. Kernikin, uh, try and remember. The warehouse. It was robbed, don't you remember? That you, Frankie? Why don't you ever come to see me, Frankie? Mr. Kernigan, I'm not Frankie. I'm a detective. The fur robbery. Mr. Kernigan, think. It was only five years ago, Easter Sunday, two men robbed the warehouse. Mr. Kernigan, listen to me. The warehouse? That's right. Easter Sunday. Now try to remember. They robbed the warehouse. What warehouse? Come on, Grandpa. You remember that job you had, don't you? Frankie, where you been all this time, Frankie? I missed you, boy. Who's Frankie? He thinks everybody's his kid brother. Got killed back in World War I or something. Swell chance you got trying to get him to remember anything. He don't even know his own name half the time. This is one of his good days. So Cannon is dead. The eyewitness is senile. If Doby doesn't come through, I've been sold a fine bill of goods. Well, I'll pick him up when he comes back from a trip, Ed, but you're not going to like that part of it any better than the rest. What's the matter with Doby? Well, that's just the point. Nothing. I told his wife I was from the finance company. Mm hmm. Nice little woman, Ed. A couple of nice little kids. House, mortgage, down payments on a car. Not a speck of trouble anybody knows of. Nice, steady type. They say. No, no. I went through it pretty thoroughly, Ed. They had some rough medical expenses when the first baby came. That was probably what got him into the thing with Smith. But he was nothing but a stooge. It was probably the first and last job he did. Well, bring him in. That's all I ask. All right. All right, but I still don't see how you can get him. Smith, you can't touch because you tied your own hands on his promise to give you Doby. Now, how can you hang anything on Doby? With a confession... I've got Smith's testimony, and Doby's own confession would constitute independent evidence. Bring him in. Sure. Sure. By the way, hmm? that baby, the one that was sick. Yeah. It died anyway. Doby, if you'll sit there. A counselor, if you don't mind. Thank you, I'll stand. You've informed your client of his rights? I have. Well? I advised him that you had no case against him because, as you well know, Mr. McCormick, 
Uh, Adobe, I'll repeat this. Under New York law, an accomplice alone, without other independent evidence connecting him with the commission of the crime, cannot be tried. Adobe, do you understand that? Uh, no, sir, but I, but I want to... Danny, shut up. Well, no, sir, I want to help myself. Danny, you're in the clear. You don't need to say a thing. Please, will you let me talk for once? Mr. McCormick, am I in the clear if I don't talk? Well, I've only got Smith's story against you, Adobe. But I'm still working on the case. I might pick up more evidence. Oh, no. It's up to you, Adobe. Or your conscience. Smith's testimony isn't enough legally. I see. He's trying to hang you with robbery one. That's 30 years for you, Adobe, to buy himself out of two years. He's a louse, Smith. That's right. You want to make a statement? Mr. McCormick, I I'd like to get this off my mind. I lost 50 pounds in five years. I got a wife, I got the kids. I can't do it. All right, Doby. You can go. Danny, pick up your hat while you can. No, I got something to say. Mr. McCormick... Danny... I want to square myself with you. I could give you something on this louse, Smith, to make up the score. But I can't go to the can myself and what... I'm about to tell you. Is that okay with you? Go ahead, Doby. But it had better be worth listening to. What I mean, I know that hoodlum. I know how he operates. Danny, for the last time, shut up. No. No, he must have known Cannon was dead. Even I read about it in the papers. And for sure, he knew the watchman wouldn't know spit from Shinola. He makes it a point. He makes it a point to check up before he makes a move. Danny, I wash my hands of you. You're making damaging admissions with every breath you take. Counselor, the boy is doing the right thing. He's shown remorse. He's showing willingness to cooperate. Cooperate? Mr. McCormick, Smith give you one job he done? I can give you six. All right, fair is fair. I'll give you the same chance I gave him. You make me a case against Smith, and I won't use anything you tell me against you. Is that a promise? Your lawyer will tell you it's binding. Is he giving it to me straight? You can take his word. He's bound by law to regard your admissions as incompetent if obtained under promise. Well, I don't know what it means, but it sounds good. All right. Hijack, and that was his racket. The both of them, Smith and Cannon. Cannon would set him up, Smith would work with him, and I drove. All the time? These five times, and I'm not talking about uh, the one he gave you, number one. And you can check these out. You never had a smell who it was. Number one, a load of furs from, I think it was Ideal. No, New Deal furries. New Deal? What kind of furries? Raw furs, all stiff, hard like cardboard, not even cut yet. Who was on the job? Well, the three of us. We stole a parked truck. No witnesses? No, sir. No good. Give me another. All right, let me see. Five grand worth of cigarettes from a root truck up in Newburgh. We trailed them. Yeah, we cased his route, and when he stopped the coffee up at a diner, I bridged the distributor. Mm -hmm. Same deal, no witnesses? That's right. Same problem. Your testimony can't convict him, his can't convict you. Come on, Danny. Make it better than that. Honest, Mr. McCormick, I I'm doing the best I know how. We always work the same way. The Lord of Radios we got in Jamaica, that was a trail job, and when the truck and helper was delivering, I grabbed it, and... Uh, Liquor, we got ten grand worth of liquor from the Greenland Products Outfit over in Habitat. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you drive it to the city? By the ferry. What ferry? The Ancus Ferry. That was before they built a new bridge. Uh -huh. What difference would it make, a ferry? The never bridge? mind, never mind. Keep going. But if you can't use it, I'm not doing you any good. I'm only tying myself in deeper. But honest, you told me yourself, Mr. McCormick. He was willing to stick you with one thing against me... To buy himself, uh, what, uh, two years off time? He deserves, but, but, but me, I'm only trying to buy myself some consideration for my family. I mean, he's trying to keep out of jail. I'm trying to keep going straight. I appreciate that, Dober. You're trying, but you're not giving me anything. The situation is always the same. One accomplice accusing the other. No witnesses. Kid, isn't there anything back there where there was somebody else involved besides yourself and a dead man and Smith a... An independent witness? Uh, let me think, let me think. No. Now it was just a case of almost when I got stopped for speeding outside Trenton. Hmm? 
Uh, the trooper wouldn't know me from a hole. No Say that again. What about Trenton? Trenton, New Jersey? Yes, sir. It was liquor again. Maybe thirty, forty thousand 40,000 worth of liquor. Uh-huh. I got 500 bucks for that. It paid for the kid's funeral. And then I give up. Tell me about it. It's like the others. What's the use? Me and Cannon and Smith. What about Trenton? What happened? It was the Greenland liquor again. We picked the truck up outside of Philly. We trailed it up Jersey. He got ahead of us outside Trenton. I had a speed to catch up. Well, we got a warrant. Where did you hijack it? Right out of the warehouse yard in New York. The minute the driver went inside to check Danny, in. you've done it. Detective Russo, bring in Smith. Yes, sir. But it was just like the others. Just me and him and Cannon. What'd I do? What'd I say? You mean you don't know? Counselor, do you see what I'm driving at? Frankly, all I can see is that you've got what amounts to a confession from my client. Well, if you don't, Smith won't. Bring him in, Detective Russo. He's dead. Smith, you know this boy? Huh? Oh, hiya, Danny. You dog, you dirty dog. Now, take it easy, Danny. I'm an old man, you gotta understand. I can't take no... Shut up. Days. Sit down. Now, what do you know about a liquor hijack job? Greenland distributors out of Philadelphia to New York. All right, what do you want to know? Was Danny in on it? He drove. Does he say that? Yeah. What about Cannon? Well, uh, Cannon's dead. It's a bad case, Mr. McCormick. I can't help you anymore, Mr. McCormick. You can see that. I can't go into that. Meaning what? Well, like you explained when you brought me in this morning. I'm an accomplice. He's an accomplice. He told you about the Greenland job. You can't use it against me any more than you can use what I told you about the Easter job against him. So why should I give you robbery one against me? The great jailhouse lawyer you turned out to be. Well, I'm right, ain't I? Thirty years? That's unreasonable. So I do my three years. I tried, didn't I? Sure you did, Smith. But not in good faith. You knew the law of accomplices all the time. But you had a rotten law professor when you took lessons from Billy the Bull. All right, so he told me. So where does that leave you? You still can't do a thing to me on any of those jobs. Nothing. You never knew about the exception to the law of accomplices? What exception? The law's the law, In New York State, Sure. My hands are tied on every one of those hijackings. But when you followed a truck from Philly clear across Jersey and into New York, my friend, you were dealing in interstate commerce. So? Counselor, you tell him. I'm fed up to here with his stupid face. Interstate commerce? Federal jurisdiction, of course. What's that mean? I'll tell you the long way. The rule of accomplices doesn't apply under federal law. Dobie, anything you give me against this man, Smith, can be used against him. And you, Smith, I'll tell it to you the short way. Three letters. F-B-I. Oh, no, listen, you gotta... It's all right. You kept your promise. You gave me something big. I'll keep my promise. I'll ask the court to give you only one year on my report of cooperation. You, Danny, you'll have to take your chances, but you'll be in the clear. Don't worry about that. But the day you get out of prison in New York State, Smith, the Bureau will be waiting at the gate. Detective Russo, take this man to the tombs. Yes, sir. Danny, go home and tell your wife you've done the right thing. Tell her I said so. The story you just heard was drawn from New York City, based on the stories of the criminal law as detailed by Eliezer Lipsky, former assistant district attorney. The names of all persons and places were changed. Indictment is written by Alan Sloan, produced by Nathan Kroll, and directed by Paul Roberts. Matt Polin is starred as Edward McCormick. Jack Arthur is heard as Tom Russo. Also in the cast were George Matthews, Daniel Locko, George Petrie, Sam Gray, and Joseph Boland. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week at the same time for another indictment. Indictment has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Thank you.
Welcome back. Well, a fascinating case with a lot of great legal angles and turns and a really good twist at the end. And I think McCormick does a good job in this in balancing his commitment to justice and his integrity and ethics. And of course, yeah, you really do feel sympathy with Danny who really got into this situation because of a personal crisis. And you have to respect him and his willingness to take some risk to square things up. And of course, the moral of the story is apt, even if it's not particularly profound, which is, if you are a criminal, keep your crime in one state. Or yes, it can very well become a federal case. Then again, if that state happens to be Texas, then you'll end up dealing with the Texas Rangers, so pick your poison. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Emily. Emily has been one of our Patreon supporters since February of 2020, currently supporting the podcast at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Emily. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. Please be sure to rate and review the podcast wherever you download it from. We'll be back next Saturday with Dragnet. And in preparation for that, join us tomorrow either on YouTube or at our video theater site at videotheater.greatdetectives.net for a film which in many ways... It's part of the origin story for Dragnet, He Walked by Night. And of course, next Thursday, we'll begin to feature previously uncirculated episodes of Mr. Chameleon. But join us back here on Monday for Sam Spade, where... Sam Spade, Detective Agency. Mr. Hangover. Uh, Mr. Spade, this is Gentle Joe. What? Listen, you... Yeah, I, I know, I know how upset you must be over my little deception. Little but, uh, deception? It was what? all to a good purpose, Mr. Spade. You see, I had to get out of there in a hurry with the minimum of discussion. I seem to remember you were hustled out of the racing game for doping a few three-year-olds. Well, that's what some people in official circles felt. But, Mr. Spade, I want to apologize to you and tell you that I will be able to explain everything to your satisfaction. No. What's no. the matter? No. Get away! Hello! 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 I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.